Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos I put out, which lately we did a shift on the channel and I've been putting out a little bit more content. So if you wanna hang out with me a little bit more, make sure you hit the button so that you, or the bell, so you know when I post another video. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. I appreciate you so, so much, seriously. I wanted to take the time to do an intro today up here really quick, but we will be doing a lot of our working down in the garage. I picked up a hutch and we're gonna be repurposing it, re-envisioning it, re-envisioning it. We're gonna be doing different things to it. And I thought it would be really cool to turn it into like an industrial style modern bar for my husband to hold, you know, he likes to enjoy a glass of whiskey or gin or whatever. And he's got a lot of beer glasses that he has collected while being in Europe. And I thought it would be a really cool piece. It's kind of simple. You'll see it. It's actually, if you guys watched the thrifting video of us, I went back later on that week to go get remember that four four tier plant stand and he was like no you don't need that oh I got that I got that and I got the hutch so I will show you guys it when we go downstairs I just wanted to take the time to say hi to you guys and tell you what we were doing without the car noise because you know when I'm working in my garage there's I live on a busy road so I will probably be doing voiceovers from this point forward, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is going to be another repurposing, awesome start to finish, and let's get started. All right, everybody, so we are down in the garage. I did go back, so these pieces you didn't see in the video. We're gonna do something cool with this, I thought, you guys like the idea of me repurposing something for a bathroom. It's small. It will show you guys how to repurpose something for your bathroom and make it functional. I just couldn't pass up this cute little chest right here. I think it's something that would be cute for the end of a bed, maybe one of my kids' beds. I don't know. So this piece, the, the doors are behind it. So I will put it together and I'll show you what it looks like. But we had talked about this. In this little clip right here, what did you say about it? These are the simple things that people like. Yeah, but you, it, it doesn't have a lot of detail, so it's actually pretty easy for you to make it what you want to. And it almost looks like farmhouse, kind of, right? Yeah. It's not very, it's not very heavy. Not heavy duty, which is kind of a good thing, because then it'd be easy. It's not bad, 45 euro. I wonder if they have the key. That would be really... I, I kind of like it. Oh, I only have so much room. Hey everyone, so we're gonna try to combat the cars. Look, you can see me in the reflection. We're gonna try to combat the cars and the wind noise. It's kind of windy. So here's the bottom, and then there are two different pieces. Here comes a car. That's one. So. This top part here are the doors. We're going to keep those in there, but I don't have the key to this So we're going to do something a little bit different with this what are you doing so if I'm going to be doing an industrial Modern look the bun feet down here are just not going to work so I have been work woodworking for a long time and I have built a few dressers and things like that so I have done bases for pieces and you know, back in the day, I wasn't videotaping them, and so I was never able to show you guys. And now there's a lot of YouTube videos where they are adding bases to dressers and pieces of furniture, which I think is great. But I just wanna let you know, I, I this is not something new for me, so I'm going to show you a base that I have built before that I think is going to fit this piece. And the reason why is because I am going to cut handles. So my friend Christina at Reclaimed Heirloom, I have cut quite a few pieces, and I'll show you them right here where I have made handles out of copper piping. But she's so smart. She came up with a different way to mount them and I'm going to try her way of mounting them versus the way that I used to do it. So I used to use the copper bells, which is part of copper plumbing, but I think her way is gonna work a million times better and it's just gonna look really cool. So thank you, Christina, over at Reclaimed Heirloom for giving me a different mounting idea for this copper piping DIY hardware. We're gonna make this, so industrial look, right? We're probably gonna go with a dark color on this. 
because I really like black and copper together. So we're gonna do the copper piping. I'm gonna show you how to cut and make handles out of this. And then if you see these dowels, oops, you see these dowels? This is, that is a bad mamba jamba, okay? I'm, I have pretty long fingers, really, and this thing is pretty big. So we are going to make a base using dowels to tie it in to the circular copper handles, the industrial modern feel that I want for this piece. So with that being said, we are going to reimagine this piece and hopefully it will come out looking sweet. Take one last look at the before. First thing I'm gonna do here is remove the bun feet. So I'm gonna take my mini pry bar and I'm gonna take my claw hammer and I'm gonna go at the very top of the foot and I'm going to try to release that from the platform that it's on, that it's connected to. So that way I can try to save the feet, that way I can use them later. So you're gonna do this, but you're gonna take your time and go around the entire foot. And you can see right here, I was able to take it off so I can reuse them. I want this piece to have a really modern look, so I'm gonna remove the bottom of it, but the usually the trim comes off away from the bottom of a piece of furniture, but this was really on there. So I removed the bottom completely, and then I ended up taking my mini pry bar and removing the trim as well. I try to save as much as I can, but this was on there so much that I really, I just had to pull the trim off to get it away from that platform, the bottom of the piece, so that way I can reuse the bottom of the piece. So I'm gonna take all the trim off and then I'm gonna put that bottom back on because I need somewhere to attach my new base. Right here, I'm gonna to try to take this trim off as cleanly as I possibly can. I'm gonna use my mini pry bar and my claw hammer, but it is on there really, really tight. And so I want to try to reuse this trim, but if I can't, then it's not the end of the world. I am going to reuse this platform that it's connected to. And so that's the most important part right now is making sure that I get that platform back on the bottom of this piece. Now that I've removed the trim from the base of this piece, I'm going to replace the base of this piece. I'm gonna take some wood glue and I'm going to put it along the entire edge of this piece so that way I can put the bottom back on. And I am going to add a few screws just to really secure it and make sure that it's on there really good. Next, we're gonna start building the base. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a one by two, and I'm going to make sure that it is flush against the surface, but there is a little trim part on the outsides that I have to remove. So I'm gonna measure the amount of the trim that needs to come off so that that one by two can sit flush to the surface. So if I set that one by two on there, you can see that it wouldn't sit flush. So I need to measure out the width of my one by two on that little trim part over to the right hand side. So that way I can take my coping saw and I can cut just that part off. So that way my one by two will sit flush against the front of this. Once I've marked my spot, I'm gonna go in with my coping saw and I'm going to cut that bottom of the trim off. I wanna use a coping saw because it's not super intense and so it's thin enough that 
it will cut this. It's, it's strong enough that it'll cut that area, but it also won't get crazy and you won't have to worry about it cutting through your piece. So once I've cut it, I'm gonna take my mini pry bar and my claw hammer and I'm gonna get underneath that part that I cut so I can pop it up. And that way I have a nice clean cut. Once I cut the trims on both sides, I put my one by two back on to make sure that it sits flush and it's lined up against the bottom of my furniture. I'm gonna take my one by two and I am going to cut for the trim all the way around the bottom. So I need these to be cut at 45 degree angles in the front. So the back is gonna be straight the front's gonna have a 45 degree angle, same exact thing with the other side, and then the very front piece is gonna have two 45 degree angles, and at the end, it's all gonna butt up together, and so that way it is one nice cohesive trim piece on the bottom of this hutch. After I've marked my 45 degree angle, I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna put it in my miter box and I'm gonna cut it with my curve saw just to show you that you can still cut a 45 degree angle with one of these boxes. But the next part for the rest of this, I'm gonna bring my actual power miter saw out and so we will be using a power tool for the rest of this. We won't be sawing this wood with this miter box anymore because it's oak and it's pretty hard. It's not impossible, but it's much easier if you use a miter saw. Once I've cut all my pieces, I'm going to dry fit them to make sure that all my angles look good, that they're not too long or too short or anything like that. So I'm actually going to take my clamps and I'm gonna clamp them up all next to each other so that way I know that all of my angles will butt up against each other and everything will look good. Once I know everything is good and all of my angles are going to look nice, I'm gonna put wood glue on all the trim pieces and then I'm going to, what I first was gonna do was brad nail them by hand. But it's this oak is just way too hard and I didn't bring out my brad nailer. So I'm gonna countersink some screws into these trim pieces so that way I know that they're in there nice and tight because I am building a new base. Honestly, for me, screws are better than brad nails anyway, so I will just go in and fill them with some wood filler later on. I'm gonna repeat this process around the edge of my entire piece on all sides.
Removing the legs from the bottom of this piece pulled a little bit of the wood off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some two-part wood filler. This is just full spackle, bondo, whatever you want to call it. And I am going to even everything out. So I'm going to sand it all down first to smooth it out as much as I possibly can. And then I'm going to take my two-part wood filler and I'm going to fill in those areas so that we can have a nice even level base for where we're going to put our feet. I'm sure someone's going to say, why didn't you just go buy a new piece of even wood? Because um, plywood is like $100 a piece right now. <laughs> and I like to reuse things and I already had this on hand. So it's honestly cheaper for me to fill this and smooth it and even it out than it is for me to go and just buy another piece of wood. and re So I'm reusing things. So this two part wood filler, what you do is you pull some out of the can and then you're gonna take the hardener, which is usually red, and you're going to fold it into each other. And I'm just gonna take a plastic spatula and I'm going to fill in these areas so that I can smooth and even everything out. I'm going to have to do this twice just so that I know that it's nice and smooth and I did it the proper way, but this stuff dries really fast. So don't over mix it, don't mix too much, otherwise it's gonna dry and you're gonna waste it. But this will dry and harden to where I'm gonna sand it probably within a half an hour and then I can repeat this process. I waited about a half an hour and now I'm gonna sand everything smooth with my Surf Prep 5 inch random orbital sander. I also filled in all of my screw holes with this filler as well. It, it creates a really nice smooth fill so that way you don't have to do it a few times. So I'm gonna smooth everything out and then I'm going to repeat this process. I'm gonna remix another set and then I'm going to smooth it all out and then I'm going to sand it smooth and I'm going to use a level to make sure that everything is level once I have cut all of my legs. I'm going to start cutting my legs. So for this, I used a two inch dowel and I cut my legs at about eight inches. It's going to be different for each piece that you guys use. It's going to, you know, you might want shorter legs for a different shaped piece. You may want short, longer legs for a piece. It, it's up to you really how far you want that off of the ground. But what I'm doing right now is I am measuring how long I want my legs to be. And I'm going to cut those with my miter saw. So once I have all my legs cut to the length that I want them, I'm going to set them on my base now that I have filled it and smoothed everything out. And this is where I'm going to see if everything's level. So I'm going to make sure that all the legs are one inch from the front, one inch from the side, and they're all even. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a one by two and I'm going to put them diagonally across each leg and I'm going to use my level to make sure that everything is level because this is how my base is going to go anyways. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the one by two on those and I'm going to set my level up there and I'm going to make sure it's level. And then I'm going to do it on the adjoining or the adjacent side and then I'm going to make sure it's level. And then I know that my filler and everything is good. And once I know that, then I'm going to mark the spot where my legs are with a pencil. So that way I can just set them back down on the little circles I make.
Once I'm done with that step, I'm gonna pull the legs off and I need to find the center of that circle. So these are two inches by two inches. And so I need to find that one inch center right there. So I'm gonna mark at one inch going that way and then I'm gonna go the other direction. So that way I can make a X or a cross in the center because we are going to affix these legs to the base using T-nuts, hex bolts, and locking washers. I've seen people who have just screwed the legs into the base, but we want it to be more secure. So these are hex bolts, and then these are the prolonged T-nuts, and then there's locking washers that we use. So that way the bolts don't go through the wood. I'm using 5 16 for all of these. So you want them all to measure at 5 16 If you don't use this big of a dowel, then use a smaller size, but make sure that your bolts that your washers and that your nuts are all the same size. You wanna find the center of your legs. So obviously the legs are two inches by two inches. So you want that center one inch, just like we found on the circles. I used a lag bolt as like a center punch. So that way it would be almost like a pilot hole for my, when I'm screwing into the wood. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going down the length of the hex bolt and I'm using a 5 16 drill bit as well. So that way it is the same size and you want that to be flush with the surface before you go in and you put your T-nut in. What I like to do is screw my bolt into my T-nut and then I like to hammer it in. It's really hard because the holes, everything is so tight and it's all the same size that sometimes with that T-nut, it doesn't just sit in it. So putting your bolt in there and allowing it to guide that initial hammer in is super helpful but you want to make sure that you hammer it in to the point where that the t-nut is super flush with the surface as much as you possibly can once you're done with that you are going to go with your drill bit and you are going to drill those centers the center of all of those circles that you found because what we're going to do is we're going to push the hex bolt up through the bottom of the piece. So this is still flipped upside down. So we're gonna take the hex bolt, push it up, and then we are going to fit all the legs on the piece to make sure that everything is cohesive and adhered. And we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna use a level to make sure everything is level and good before we do the cross braces. I brought this bottom inside on a level floor so that way I could make sure that the level was actually sitting on a level floor before we moved on to the cross braces. I conned Chris into coming downstairs with me so he could help visualize this next part for me. Uh, we worked at one piece of wood at a time. So what we're doing is we're taking the one inch dowel. So the legs are two inch dowels. The cross braces are one inch dowels and we're going to put those across and we're gonna mark where they sit on the bottom of the foot. I can't tell you measurements because I worked each one at a time. So this is what you're gonna have to do. You just be patient, set it on the top and mark where they're at. And then you're gonna mark the center of that piece. So it should be one inches because the dowels are one inches. So you're gonna mark the center point, which is a half an inch for the one inch ones. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna help me know where I need to bore the hole in the legs to be able to put the dowels in. The next part is for me to measure the legs and then I'm gonna find the halfway point for the legs because this, these particular legs are going to be halfway down. When we're doing the cross brace, the other legs, the dowel, the cross brace of the dowel is gonna be slightly above or under this. So we're going to start with a halfway point for this particular, these two legs and this cross brace. So I'm marking where it's halfway on this leg. And that way I can make a mark going from the top where we just marked and right here to where I can make a center point. And that's when I know where I use my spade bit to make the hole. Okay. So this is the halfway point that we just marked. So that is the center point on the leg. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that top part that we had marked previous to this, and we're going to make a line. So we're going to draw a line from where that center point was, and we're going to push it down. See right here. And now we're going to use my T square and we're going to draw a line so that 
those two lines right there intersect and that way we'll know where our center point is and where we need to drill for these dowels to go in for this this particular two legs and dowel watch this all the way through first don't follow this without watching it fully before you start trying to do this base so that you way you understand what I'm saying because once I build the next base or once I work on the next dowel you'll understand so we did the halfway point and now I'm marking where it is and that's my circle and that is where I'm going to bore my hole we're working on just the two legs and the one cross brace at a time because the measurements are going to be a little bit different on the other one so what I'm doing right now is I am taking my wood clamps and I am clamping that leg down to my workbench, AKA my jumping box. But this is the most secure place that I can work. And you wanna make sure that that center point is straight up. So that way, when you go in with your spade bit, you can go straight down and the whole, the circles that you make will not be all wonky. You're not going at it from the side. You wanna make it sure you're going at this in a parallel direction. So now I'm taking my lag bolt and I'm gonna create another little pilot hole and I'm gonna take a one inch spade bit because the dowels are one inch. You could do something slightly smaller and hammer them in, but I can't find mine, so we're doing one inches. So you're going to go parallel and you're going to have moderate pressure and you're going to go down. I go down about three quarters of an inch. So that way the dowel is sitting in there. I can put my glue in and I know that it's secure. So I made a line at three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and bore that hole just a little bit more. And that is what I'm going to do for each one of the legs. Once I'm done making the holes in each leg, I'm going to come back inside that's where I am in my entryway. And I'm going to put the dowel in both of the legs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them back in their position so that I know how much of that cross brace I need to cut off. So you're going to see right here, I'm going to try to set them back down on their little pre-existing circles that we had made before. And you're going to see that they are off slightly. So we're setting it in and it's off by about a half an inch. I know that I need to cut that much off of that cross brace dowel, the one inch dowel. So I'm gonna measure it and you can see right here, it's about a half an inch. So I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna cut a half an inch off of that one inch dowel. And then we're going to put them back and put them on the circles and see if that was enough to make sure that they are exactly where they need to be. And if they are, we are going to glue them in place, glue them and screw them or bolt them. These are perfect and right where they need to be so we can affix them to the base after we glue the dowels into the legs and we bolt them. So here is what I was talking about. This is the next cross brace and we can't go halfway down the legs because we already did that with the first one. So we're going to set them on top of that cross brace. So the measurements are gonna be slightly off. So this is how I decided to do it. I put a wood clamp on one of the legs and I set it across and I'm gonna adjust that wood clamp until that level shows me that the cross brace is level. And then once it is, I'm gonna mark where that one inch dowel is with a pencil. Once they're level, I'm gonna use a wood clamp and I'm gonna clamp the center part so that way they don't move. And then I can mark on each leg with a pencil where those dowels need to be. And that's where I'll know, that's how I'm gonna know where I need to bore the holes is by doing it this way. But I'm gonna make sure that it's level again and now I'm gonna mark them. Once I've marked the dowel, I'm gonna pull it away and I'm going to use a flexible tape since these are rounded, it's a lot easier to do it this way. And they're, the hole is one inch, the circle's one inch, so I need to find the center, which is gonna be a half an inch on that side. And then I'm gonna turn the tape so that way I can make a cross or an X. 
X marks the spot. I cut the one inch dowel to the same length that I cut the other cross brace to. So I'm gonna do this on both legs and then I'm gonna bore the holes and then I'm gonna fit them the same exact way I did the first leg and cross brace section. And then I'm going to glue and bolt everything and it's all gonna look nice and it's all gonna go on there perfectly. I have built the base and affixed it to this hutch and now we brought it upstairs because we are going to paint it and we are going to build some hardware with copper piping. So the first thing I did is remove all the hardware. I like to use precision screwdrivers when I'm working with any kind of vintage furniture and I just got this new set. These are really great for the super small tiny screws that you will run into when you are dealing with this stuff. I'm removing all of the locks because I don't have the key to it and I'm gonna make handles. So I'm gonna remove all the locks and I'm gonna show you how we can fill them in. Okay, remember I said I like to reuse stuff. So these are the legs from before and these were pulled off of the base. And so now I'm gonna remove the nails out of here and I'm gonna take my mini pry bar and my claw hammer and I'm gonna separate those two pieces of wood. So what it is is it's plywood, like two layers of plywood stacked. And I'm gonna use that because it is the perfect thickness to fill in the locks, the area where there's locks. So I'm gonna take my mini pry bar, I'm gonna go in the center and I'm just gonna hammer it and split those apart from each other. And then we are going to use those to make them as inserts to fill in these locks. So if you look right here, I put it in there and you can see that it is the perfect thickness. And so what we're gonna do is I am going to cut this little piece with my kerf saw. And I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down the center. So I need to see how wide I need it. And actually I need it just the center of this piece. So I cut a line down the center. I used my wood clamps. I'm using my sawhorse and so that my kerf saw can go in that crack of my sawhorse and I'm cutting them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take those little pieces of wood and I'm gonna insert it in where that lock used to be. I'm gonna hammer it in. Now, if you know how deep it is, you could have cut this pre previous to this, but I didn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on my sawhorse, I'm gonna take my kerf saw, and I'm just gonna be really careful, and I'm gonna butt it right up against that edge, and I'm just gonna cut the excess wood off. I'm sure there's other ways you can do it, but this is how I did it. Once I was done filling those, I mixed my two part wood filler again, and I am going to use this for filling in the keyholes and the sides and all of the things, because this is gonna give me a nice smooth finish. So I am filling all this stuff in, and then once it dries, I am going to sand it down with my three x four electric ray by Surf Prep. I'm going to start cutting the copper hardware, but my copper piping is really tall and it was hitting my ceiling. So I'm using a dowel that's the same size to visualize. So I'm gonna do one inch from the bottom and one inch from the top. Again, this is something that you are gonna decide where you wanna place it, how long you want it, but I'm doing, I say one inch, I think it was two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom. And I'm using this wooden dowel so I can really visualize where the placement is gonna be before I cut it. So I'm going to take my wood clamp and I'm gonna clamp it on there so that I can step back and just kinda see, hey, this is where I want it to be. So I'm gonna do two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom, and then I'm gonna mark it with a piece of tape so that way I can measure it again and then I can mark it with 
I can mark my copper piping and you'll see me do that. Now, if your copper piping is not as tall as mine is, then just do this with the copper piping if you want. Or if you already know, I want it one inches from the top, one inches from the bottom without visualizing it. But this right here is allowing me to actually visualize it in place before I cut it to what I want to cut it. And again, my copper piping was way too long. And so that's why I'm using a wooden dowel to do it. Now that I have visualized where I want this to be, I'm gonna measure my dowel so that I know how long to cut my copper piping. So I'm gonna measure my dowel and then I'm gonna take my copper piping and I'm going to mark that. I like to mark the round things like that I'm, I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut this and I like to mark them with tape so I know where to cut it. And so I'm gonna take my jigsaw and I'm going to cut all of my copper piping once I have measured it and seen where I want it to be. Because jigsaws have different kinds of blades for wood and metal and things like that, and you can cut different surfaces with it, make sure that you're using the proper blade. So this is a metal blade to cut this copper piping. When I used to do copper piping, when I used to make my own copper piping hardware, I used to use the bell hangers. But I'm gonna use a reducing tee for this, which I saw my friend Christina for Reclaimed Heirloom do this. So I'm gonna put the dowel that I used before into there and I'm gonna mark where I need to cut it off and I'm going to use that to screw into the copper piping to hold it to the piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tight bond quick and thick and I'm going to glue the reducing tees at the end because that is going to be what my hardware looks like. It's going to have the reducing tees at the very end. Now my friend Christina, she did a little bit bigger of reducing tees and pushed it down over the copper piping. But what I'm doing is I'm using them at the ends and I'm taking those little dowels that I cut and I'm going to glue that in there. And then I'm gonna clamp them so that that wooden piece can stay in there so I can screw it later. While I let those sit and dry, I am going to clean my piece now. So I take Dixie Bell's White Lightning TSP base cleaner and I'm gonna clean this entire piece. And then I'm gonna go over it with clean water and a clean rag to get any residual off. And then I'm going to go over this whole piece with collard greens. So collard greens is a really deep, almost forest green color, hunter green color, which is my husband's favorite. So this piece is something I'm building for my husband. And he, he really likes this color, but he also likes kind of a washed, distressed farmhousey look. And so I'm gonna just do one coat of this color on everything. That way it's a little bit easier for me to distress it away and make it look almost washed or aged or worn. Once my paint was completely dry, I went over the entire piece with a fine rad pad, which is about a 220 to 240 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to distress it, but I'm also going to concentrate on some of the areas that had a little less coverage so that I can make it look like it's more worn. I like to use Big Mama's Butter on dark colors because it richens it up and plus it, you can avoid streaks by using this. So this can be used to seal your wood. You do not need to put anything else over it once you are done putting this on. So what you're going to do is apply it, wipe off all the excess, and then take another microfiber cloth maybe a few hours later and just buff it in. And this has beeswax and carnauba wax and a bunch of different stuff in it. And so it will seal a bunch of different good things to seal your furniture. And it will seal your furniture for you and it will richen the color and it also smells really good. So this is what I use to seal my furniture. Now that my copper hardware is dry, I'm going to measure so that I make sure that I put them in the right place. So I'm gonna remeasure all the areas that I did first when I originally made the copper piping so that I know how far apart I want them. And I wanna make sure that that little inset right there, I find the center part so that way the bars going vertical will be centered. And then I'm going to drill a hole through the area that I want my reducing T to be. And then I'm gonna take a screwdriver and I'm gonna push it in on the other side. And then 
That way I can see where it's coming out and I can kind of butt it up against that little wooden dowel that is inside of that reducing tee. And I'm gonna screw it in there and then it's going to be affixed and I'm gonna do the same thing for all of the hardware. The last thing I did was stain the bottom in walnut no pain gel stain. I waited to stain this because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep the wood natural or darken it, but I figured the dark looks much better. So that is what I did and I will seal this with gator hide 72 hours after this dries, but this is the final piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to switch over to my phone because I broke the lens on my camera. So we're going to talk about staging and this piece is pretty tall. And so I want something to counterbalance the tallness of this piece, but it's also modern and kind of like a farmhouse boho. I did the distressing because my husband really likes a washed kind of look, like a worn look like this. So that's what I did for that. So the feel, the feel for this is going to be kind of a modern boho farmhouse staging. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. I hope you liked this video. I was going to do a little bit more in depth with staging, but my lens on my camera broke. The camera fell over, so I'm waiting for a new lens. So I'm using my phone right now, but um, the video has gone long enough. I think it was more, more in depth than the last one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, let me know. Shoot me a comment below. Also, I'm gonna put nice staged pictures up here in a second. Remember everything I use is in the is in the description below. I am going to do a breakdown sheet again like I did the last one of all what I put into it. We are going to keep this but I will put what I would put this up for and what a potential profit would be. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you guys next week with another custom creation. Have an awesome week guys. Oh, my love You're such a fragile thing, I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm it all And oh, my love About the cold just yet. The trees haven't started to shed. Just feel the summer sun as it warms our bed. Yeah.